Good music sets feet moving all over the world. Our feet seem to naturally move with the beat. Our hands clap along with the drums and our hips sway to the rhythm. We can't help it, but why is that? Why do we feel driven to move our bodies when we hear music? Let's start at the beginning, the brain and how it perceives sound. When our ears perceive sound waves, they send this information to the auditory cortex in the brain. The auditory cortex then decodes the information in the sound, its volume, pitch, frequency, and so on. For random and incoherent sounds, what we call noise, the auditory cortex perceives it as such and pays no attention to it, unless it causes us pain. However, ordered periodic sound, or music, tickles the brain in very interesting ways. You see, the auditory cortex is linked to many different parts of the brain, cognition, emotion, language, and movement. When we listen to music, all these regions light up. The motor regions allow us to break out a dance move, while reward circuitry secretes neurotransmitters and hormones that make us feel good. There is also evidence that dancing to music releases the body's natural painkillers, making us more tolerant to discomfort. The fact that music makes us reflexively dance is very curious on an anthropological level, as traditions of dancing are found all around the globe. So what's so special about dance and music? The answer is a long evolutionary link of life with music. Though why such a link developed in the first place remains unclear. Some hypothesize that music began in the form of small rhythmic beats, like tapping one's foot. Our ancestors soon learned to coordinate with others to create more complex rhythms. One reason, some scientists think, that we began synchronizing with other people is because it allowed us to create social bonds. Several archaeological sites have found musical instruments dating back as far as 40,000 to 60,000 years ago. This long history suggests that it is beneficial to have neural connections that help us sync up with our groupmates, which might have an advantage to scare away predators as a group. This might help explain why we break out into our very own air guitar solos while listening to rock music. Our brains think that we're all part of the same orchestra. This mental coordination, at some point, resulted in dance. This propensity to dance and make music in groups has led scientists to propose that this might be one reason why humanity has managed to form and remain in large groups or societies. Almost every society has a dance that is unique to its culture, and evidence has been found that humans have been dancing since we could first paint on walls. When we look deeper into the brain, on a cellular level, a special type of neuron might be the reason we can move to specific rhythms so well. These neurons are called mirror neurons, and as the name suggests, they mirror observation into action. What this means is that these neurons are activated when we see someone else perform actions, as well as when we perform that same action. In short, these neurons help us copy the world around us, and they've been implicated in our ability to dance. Besides social grouping, dancing might also have started as a mating strategy. From birds to insects, animals dance and make music to impress their mates. Scientists think this is a representation of the animal's fitness, signifying the quality of their DNA. Many species of birds also dance to music, seemingly for the fun of it. Research on Snowball, the groovy cockatoo, showed that the bird demonstrates consistent choreography, 14 distinct moves to be precise. This indicates that other animals might also have neural connections that allow them to appreciate music. The researchers studied Snowball's moves, thinking that the bird might be performing in order to bond with its human companions, but more research is still needed. One aspect that differentiates animals that dance to music, and those that do not, is language. The auditory cortex is linked to language centers in the brain, and listening to music has been shown to activate these areas. This seems to be the difference why parrots and cockatoos dance, and chimpanzees do not. These birds can mimic language in a way that chimps can't. However, this might be the case for human music. Other animals might dance in ways that humans simply haven't observed yet. Therefore, music and dance might be a widespread form of communication across the realms of life. All things considered, dance is a pretty wonderful thing. And while we might not fully understand what's going on in the brain and body, it doesn't really matter, as long as we can get down to the beat. If you like this video, then please leave your comments below and subscribe to our channel for more animated stories on the science in our lives. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us.